<laughs> it's been a long 10 days. I can't believe it's been 10. It feels like a lifetime, but then also it feels like it's gone by so fast. And... No, it feels like a lifetime. So our mom, most of you know her as Gigi. Her name's Susan. She runs our clothing company, Grace and Joy, that we own together with her. And Chloe, this Chloe's channel, I don't know why I'm talking. <laughs> this is Chloe out. Simone says. <laughs> She's my younger sister, mm -hmm. six years apart. And you live here in Idaho. I live in Thailand. And you are now like... The CEO, or should I say that? Mom's the CEO of Grace and Joy, but Chloe has taken over because my mom has brain cancer. And I just can't. It's so crazy to even say. say. And it's really... I mean, we have cried and cried and sobbed and sobbed. And that's I'm like, Puffy, but for right now, I just can't cry anymore because life is moving on mom is going to get treatment at a really good cancer hospital in houston and so we're so lucky happy that she just got to houston and she's going to get checked into the hospital tomorrow but we wanted to just to talk about the last 10 days so and tell you, you how traumatic it was yeah yes. so you probably know our mom is like the most vivacious active spirited person i mean she does not take no for an answer and to see her so debilitated was i think that was that was the most traumatic part even before the cancer diagnosis so on mm -hmm. monday she is preparing they were preparing to go back to thailand and she's so excited she was like, so excited because she's so been working excited. like she's had so much stress in her in the last since October, so much stress with the business, and it was like a kid looking forward to Christmas Day. It and really she was. had booked everything with points. Like our mom is really good with her points, and if anyone deserves first class, it is our mom because for travel since she's been traveling to Thailand for ten years, I mean she would just like book the back. But, you know, as you get older, you want a little bit more comfort. And when she first started going to Thailand, we would stay in, like, hotels for, like, $20 a night. The cheapest hotels. And then, you know, like, our family started doing a little bit better, and the business was growing, and it was able to afford her to to travel. And also, because she worked so hard, like, that was the one thing that she would spend money on, her tickets to Thailand and the hotels. And his she... mom doesn't take, like, a salary for herself. That was, like what she would do to reward herself with her business to just go to see Lily in Thailand two times a year. And it was really it was the like only cost, right? Yeah. And that was the only place that she could really like relax and reset. And if you've watched my videos before, I get really emotional when my mom leaves to go to Thailand because yeah, like I've said, like I don't have a lot of friends. That's something I'm going to work on. Um, and I'm really close with my mom. Like, Lily is too, but I was so happy that she was going to go on this trip to like finally get some much needed rest. It's been a hard year. It's been a hard <sighs> six months for mom, which we're not going to talk about right now. But so the last sun the Sunday before this happened, we had such a good evening with the whole family and mom was, we were just all so happy. And, and mom was so happy that all of her kids were together. Like Robbie has been up here in Idaho too because he now lives in Nashville and we were just like all together. And I remember her saying, this was so nice. I hope you could come back, come back tomorrow, come back tomorrow night for another session. And I was like, session? That's such a thing that she wouldn't She say. wouldn't have said like the word session, but it was such a nice evening. And we all just like sat around like the couch and just hung out and the kids were going crazy. And it was just so nice. And then Monday I was with her all day and she started to deteriorate. I mean, she started forgetting words and I was just like so perplexed. And what I was thinking, I was like starting to tell, like I told you and you were like, I'm worried. We we're like, huh? I started to get really worried. Chloe was really worried first. I'm like, oh, I'm sure she's fine. Like, because our mom insists that she's just tired. She always pushes through. Like, she just is always. She's all the strong one. She's the rock of our family. She's she just pushes through. Like, she does not let anything stop her. And then, you know, I'm also anticipating the trip to Thailand. Like, I want to get back to my yeah. family. I'm like, we just need to get there, and she'll be fine. And 
but she wasn't fine and she got worse and worse and when the ambulance finally arrived she couldn't even remember her name that was horrifying and the whole time that that whole first Monday I just thought like it's a stroke and I'm like oh my gosh it's a stroke did we get her in time like did we make a mistake that yeah, by not getting her, her quick aspirin. quick enough you know like it has to be a stroke but I was because she had thinking, all of like, the stroke she had a lot of stroke like symptoms and they didn't they were really they, well they also thought it might have been a blood clot mm -hmm. so there was no answers then they sent her to another hospital that was Tuesday and then on Tuesday her well her speech really started to decline I mean I think it started mentally first and she didn't like know who any of us were that was probably the really hardest yeah. part when you know when your mom like the nurse just asked her you're like who is this no. And she goes, but like she was kind of smiling about it. Like she knew we loved her, but she just couldn't. She it's didn't crazy know how the who brain we were. works. Because then, like, if I would start crying, she'd go, "Oh, oh, honey." Yeah. So she knew who we were inside, but it was like her brain wasn't registering, and she didn't know our names. And, and then she started just being like, starting to stutter and like speak like jumbled like nothing. And then that's when I really that's when I knew it was really, really serious. So she went to another hospital. The problem was Tuesday is like, we didn't get any answers. So like, it's not a, we don't think it's a, a blood clot or a, well, they saw, so they took an MRI, MRI, the first MRI, and they saw something, um, like a spot on her brain on the left side, but they didn't know if it was a mass, like a brain infection, inflammation, a lesion, yeah, inflammation, autoimmune disease. They, yeah. Then she got a spinal tap. They asked if she traveled, they were brought in this weird <laughs> infectious, infectious disease, disease doctor. doctor that was really weird. And the spinal cord tap thing, that they didn't get the results back for, like, they would say three or four days. Yeah, everything just took forever. Like, one, when she was waiting to get an MRI, like, one of the MRI machines was broken. So there's yeah. only one MRI op machine operating. So within those first two to three days, they didn't give her ba basically any treatment. They are yeah. just trying to figure out what's going on. When they, Then finally they started to put, pump her with lots of steroids, which brought the inflammation down. And Wednesday, that was a really bad day for George because he got there first. And that was like, so he was just, she was just repeating January, January, January. Yeah, I mean, she one. lost like all ability to put her sentences structurally together. And what was so strange was she was spitting out words. Like a million miles a second. Yeah, like cre she had crazy. so much energy. She could just like go get up and go to the bathroom at one point, she did, like, a little jig as she went to the bathroom, but, like, nothing that she said makes sense. She couldn't even count to three. It was her speech patterns. She would be were like, like, 504, New Orleans, one, two, three, pipply pie. Schmapple. It, 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 yeah. it, it was, like, <laughs> it was really, that was extreme. I think that was the most traumatic thing. But it was, as the day progressed, she kind of got better as we were there. And we were praying for her. Yeah. I'm praying for her. Chloe's trying to do everything she can, communicating, taking over the business, making sure, like, the bank accounts are okay. Yeah. We had a really amazing sign. We had a double rainbow that appeared outside of the window. And that was, like, I really felt that was a sign from God. Like that Yeah, because really she broke. had, and she was able to see, like, she saw that, she was so excited that it was a double rainbow. Like, and she, she was could like, see double, that. double, something, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Like, double, I can't even yeah. do the imitation of her voice this is like the most pushed to the limit me chloe and robbie and george have just like come together and we've used everything we could and i said to them i think it was tuesday or wednesday i said to robbie and chloe because we all stayed at Rob chloe's house i was like you know from sunday night when we all had that good night together before this all happened we are all different people from then. Yeah. And you and you were, I said it to you first, and then you were thought about it, and you were like, yeah. And then I said it to Robbie, and he was like, taken aback. And then he was like, well, oh. Like, he started to think about it, and he was like, oh my gosh, yeah. He was like, before I had some anxiety, and now I don't even have any anxiety like yeah. I did before, but now I have actually a reason to have anxiety. Robbie, he's only 26 years old, and, like, he really became a man in this situation. Like, he rose to the occasion, and yeah. so did Chloe. Well, I think we all played... Sorry. I think we all played, like, our separate... We It was really easy for Robbie, Lily, and I to 
play a separate but crucial role and that all made us work together and the amazing thing about it is that this did happen right before her trip like we were supposed to leave the next day to go to Seattle if this had happened in Seattle then I wouldn't we wouldn't have had Chloe or Robbie there yeah. with us if this had happened the next day after that when we were flying first to Korea then to Thailand I can't oh. even imagine like she would have died like if yeah, she had to go for sure, to Thailand yeah. she would have died yeah they wouldn't have known what to, how to treat this. I mean, when the doctors were coming in to explain like the medical jargon, like I could not understand it. The best, Robbie and Cl George, right? George could understand it. Robbie yeah. understood it really well. Well, George has more experience since he's well, he's a little bit older. Than us. He has yeah. more experience like medical stuff. But yeah. I mean, she was even getting tested for like dementia, Alzheimer's. And it just came on. Mad because, cow disease. Yeah. Other, like, infection. They were looking for, trying to find anything, like. Yeah, we said that she traveled, so that made them, like, bring in this infectious disease doctor who was unusual. And then Thursday, for me, Thursday was the hardest day because Thursday, you know, after being, like, so worn down, not sleeping at night, Thursday would come in and mom is, like, talking better able to like talk about situations and things, but her emotions were up and down and it was so exhausting because I'm trying to hold the space, stand in the gap for her spiritually and try to calm her down because I'm actually the only, that day yeah, I was yeah, the yeah. only one that could calm her down. Well, we had a problem. She really wanted her phone. And she that. was not able to have that phone. Because the phone was stimulating her brain and they needed her brain to like relax. And she got really mad that she didn't have her phone. And she kept saying, three minutes and I'm done. And then 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 I'm done. And it was like, and we, and then I was just trying to say done already. Done already, mom. Because she could only understand like a couple words. And then we were like, rest. And like she got really mad at me it could because go she from... knew I had her. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Her. Yeah, no. She got really mad at me because I'm actually the. I was actually the one who had her phone, and she associates me also with the business. But like we couldn't let her have her phone because she kept typing in the password so many times. It, it got it locked. It reset the phone, and then if I didn't have access to her phone, I didn't have any like in super important information for the store. So like I actually. Besides that she couldn't use the phone because of her brain, there was actual, actually like a technical reason she could not have her phone. So I, that day, and then George was getting frustrated because he had been pushed to the limit. Yeah. And also she was getting aggravated at George because, you know, that's her husband. So she could feel like, you know, like they have that type of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Like definitely. it's your husband, like you can be like, I need this, you know? Yeah. But for me, my, my relationship with her, like she is used to me always like trying to, calm her down or not, not yeah calm you're her down, really good like, at being called <laughs> but like yeah she associates the time with me in thailand you know yeah like a course. time like that time so i was the only i was like george you need to get out chloe you just stay out of the room let me just be in the room let me play this worship music let me be in here and i was so exhausted yeah and i think that was the day where we actually were there the less long length of time yeah, I just was like, we have to. We, and then they brought in somebody to come in to stay with her 24 hours because they were afraid, like, that she... Yeah. Yeah. To help help her, you know? Because she didn't... It, she wasn't really able... She was better when her family was around, but when we were around, it kind of, like, triggered her in certain ways. Yeah. Especially you, because she associates you with the business. Yeah. And she's, my mom's all about business, and, like, her phone is, like, how she does business, and she's trying to call people, and, you know, we didn't want to scare them with the way she was talking. And then Friday was a terrible day, because that's when the doctors told us that they were 80% sure that she has brain cancer, central nervous system lymphoma. Yeah, that was really hard, because, like, when we got there... We were so hopeful. We were, we were so really like, hopeful. Like, we got this text from George that said that she was doing so much better. And we were like, oh my gosh, we're so happy. Like, and then I remember getting there in like the first 30 seconds. And mom looks at me and goes, they think I have brain cancer. And then and you said it to me. And I was like, I was like what? what? But the nurse at the time I, did a really good job, like, calming us all down because... 
I know it's a really scary thing to say that your mom has brain cancer. And, but the nurse did a really good job of saying like, no, they don't know yet. They don't know yet. And it was, that kind of calmed us all down. But that was definitely like the most emotional day. I almost had a nervous, I almost had a panic attack. I wouldn't say nervous breakdown, but like I was on my knees, like freaking out. And the chaplain came in and man in his by sixties and he just sat and talked with me and I could just feel the Holy Spirit radiating off of him. And he held this space for me. I've been trying to hold this space and stand in the gap for my mom and my family. And then Friday, like I couldn't do it anymore. And then God sent somebody to be there for me. And that was such a blessing. And then I think it was that day that the doctor came and talked with me and George and he actually talking to him, he's like, she's in remission now for, she has a three to four week window and it'll be gone for three to four weeks. And yeah, you know, you can drive her to Houston and, and well, he ended up being wrong about that. But, um, part of this, like such a rare cancer. I mean, there's 350 million people in America and only 1500 people get this every year that means like I did the math like in Thailand if you did that same like statistics that would mean only 300 people get this in Thailand which means there's you know Thailand is le uh, more poor of a country like they probably have no idea about this disease in Thailand possibly right yeah it's if she called had... central nervous system lymphoma and it's a very rare form of brain cancer Saturday was a, well, we had spent, we live an hour away from the hospital. So for five days, we had been driving back and forth two hours a day and spending, getting there as early as we could in the morning, staying as late as we could at night. Because if you ever have experience at the hospital, you really have to go during daylight hours. You can't really visit people at night because that's when people are sleeping, they're getting their like medicine. So Saturday we decided to get a hotel room. So we And also yeah. that was the day Robbie left. Yeah, so that was really and that hard. That was really sad. And yeah. He had to go back to Nashville and, you know, he has to make money and do there I mean he'd served his purpose, you know, like yeah, you just he keep couldn't... him there. Yeah. So we decided to spend the night Saturday. I brought Leon with me. And we were, Leon was so good he that was day. So like, good. He's he such just a calm, like great little boy. Was there in the room from what time? Ten o'clock. Ten till eight o'clock. We I think we actually stayed till like not um, eight thirty or yeah. nine because mom didn't want us to go and it was so hard. I think that it was really hard leaving her every day. Yeah, and she had been really depressed the night before, and we took her to do the MRI because they had to do a second MRI on Saturday. Yeah. And we were just like so happy though, like just to have time. I was like, Mom, this is like so amazing that I can be with you now and you're not like you were a few days ago because if she had stayed like she was a few days ago, like I don't know, you couldn't you couldn't like live you you can't like live your life. I think she wouldn't have been been able to drive. She wouldn't have been able to boil water. She wouldn't have been able to make a pot of coffee. Like Yeah, she would have to be in a in a house, home taking care of 24 hours yeah. by people. So, and that was actually kind of a blessing Saturday night. Yeah, right? it was a really like, that nice was... to have because we were at the hospital for 10 hours and on Saturday. it was just Saturday. nice to be with my mom and, and she was like her old self, but a different, you know, like different, like obviously traumatized, but still like I mean, sweet and lovely and kind. I mean, the doctors nice just told her she had brain and not cancer. angry, And now she's like processing that. And then Sunday comes, and we get the results of the MRI, and, like, and the way he came in, like, they were hoping that, because, like, the steroids would reduce the inflammation, and, like, the tumor, the size of the tumor in her brain, and, like, I'm not a doctor, so if you're a doctor out there, like, maybe I'm not using the right medical jargon, but... The steroids were supposed to reduce the size of the inflammation, the tumor in her brain, but it actually increased in five days. And he showed it. And Chloe and I were the ones that had to go look yeah, at it. Yeah, we had to hear My him heart say was that. like beating so bad because I could see in the look in his face it wasn't good. He asked for George, and George had already left. And he showed and also, us like, like mom was so scared too, and because she knew she was like, oh no, because she saw the look on his face. And then we fortunately had a lovely lady who works for us named Bev, who's mom's best friend, and her son, who's a, such a strong believer. They're both such strong believers. They were there at the time. Perfect timing for yeah, that. Yeah, to get, my, get our mom's mind off of 
things. And they paid, and he prayed such a powerful prayer. And we now know like where it was on the, it is on the left side of her brain behind her eye. And what did he say about the, it's very close to the blood brain barrier. It's really barrier. close to the blood brain barrier. Um, he did say that that could be a good thing because when they do the biopsy, they won't have to go in like really close, really deep. But that three week window that he gave us, he was that's like, gone. That's like, he was like, yeah, no. I was wrong. You About need that? to get her as soon as possible. And I had thought, oh, they got, they actually had the tickets planned for Tuesday. And I had, for some reason, thought it was Wednesday. And I was like, well, they're going to Wednesday. Is it okay? Should we have them change it to Tuesday? And he was like, yeah, but it was actually Tuesday. But I'm just saying like every day is crucial. <sighs> But she was able to go home for one night, which that kind of, that she says that was good for her to just like get her stuff together. But I kind of wish she had gone right to Houston. But all of these things take a lot of time to like check into the can like this cancer hospital, MD Anderson in Houston. And Chloe did such a good job with packing all of mom's stuff. And I, on that day, was just so shot. Like I could not think, like I, I was like, I feel like I have brain cancer. Like I could yeah. not. I had so, so much all confusion. All of us like, hadn't slept very well at all. And we had such long days, like very highly emotional days. We were driving two hours from the hospital and a yeah. lot of ups and downs. It was just all ups and downs. Like this whole thing was like up. You think she's getting better and then being crushed. Like like, I but really felt, did. like, when they said brain cancer, like, I felt like the weight of the world just, like, like, and I remember walking, and I, like, feel like my feet weren't even touching the floor. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks so bad. But, like, we know our mom is really strong. And if her, if anyone can beat this, it's her. And yeah. we're all rallying to do whatever we can to help her and to be by her side for this and But I just, like, couldn't, I mean, out of everything that we ever thought would happen, like, she's got brain cancer. All Gosh. For years and years, she's always said, I have a strong mind. I've all, I have a, a strong, strong constitution. Mind. And she's always spoken that over herself, and I believe, like, that was, like, something in her spirit that spoke declarations of victory and strength over her mind, because somehow, like, inside, like, you know, her spirit knew that this would, uh, this would take place and I am do believe that she is going to make it through like I have no I really don't have a doubt like did I have doubts throughout the week did my I get tested did I yeah have a, lots of worry of course I did because I'm human like obviously I'm going through all of these emotions and all of this worry and like doubt and whatever but still praising God through it and knowing that God is in control and his plan is always good and my mom is a woman of God and of faith and he's going to walk us through this and she did say that night the last night at her house before they left the next day she's like I decree victory over she this and I had taught her about decreeing and how powerful that is and she was like really there was like a switch then and she was walking better she was more mobile she left the next morning we all said goodbye to her we didn't even cry then I felt like there was like no, supernatural think... peace yeah and when she got in the car it was also a beautiful sunny day like the kids yeah. were running out on their property but it's been I can easily say this has been the worst week of my life. This has really pushed me beyond ever, anything I could have ever imagined in my life. And we felt peace the first time yesterday, and we felt peace today. Mom is in Houston trying to get checked into MD Anderson. They did say that her the tumor behind her eye is like 1.8 centimeters. No, 1.8 of a centimeter. One eighth of a, oh, very little then. No, well, I, I think, think it's 1.8 centimeters. No, I think it's one eighth centimeter, but I okay, don't know. Okay, cut that out. Because you said 1.8, I thought it was no, one I centimeter and eight. No, I think it's one eighth of a centimeter. No, that's like, I think that's pretty big for your brain. One eighth of it's tiny, Chloe. One eighth of a centimeter is like a, a little micro dot. <laughs> you know what a little centimeter is? 
I saw that brain scan. It was definitely bigger than one eighth of a of a centimeter. Okay, it's like a millimeter. Okay, why? Well, can... That's like a little dot that they wouldn't even be able to find, like the point of a pen. At least we can At laugh. Least we laugh about these. Th you know, if I you feel can't like you just like even edit this video. Edit yeah, video I feel like we, you know together. if you just like. You, We've been laughing a little bit the whole time. I mean, laughing at some of the things mom was saying. Diddly dee, do do ba 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 she heard him them say like he was making gonna the get, appointment and then he came in but he didn't get actually get it fixed so he had just had it checked he's gonna go th get it fixed in nashville and she's like oh rob rob I your can't... teeth look so good so white so straight they're so straight and he turned like there was also this nurse who was pretty attractive and she her mom turns to the nurse and goes, his teeth they look good they're so straight you should have seen them before it's so bad <laughs> of course what, how we're saying it was not how she was really saying it it's yeah. all completely jumbled but i cannot do the impression robbie he's good at doing impressions maybe he, he was do like yeah yeah <laughs> robbie's like yeah he was so embarrassed probably but not really you know it was a really high stress situation and everybody's characters were tested and revealed and what's in our hearts are revealed and we've become better people yeah. because of this i would say like i'll admit it i was you know everyone i not everyone but a lot of people have narcissistic ten tendencies and my narcissistic tendencies have really gone down, 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 down after the last. I think it's like they're not, they're gone completely after this last week. Yeah. And I think I've just been strengthened spiritually and like pushed to another. And if anyone ever complains about their mom in front of me, I'm gonna be like, well, at least your mom doesn't have brain cancer. Yeah, but also at least we have a really amazing. Mom, yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah, not everybody does. I know that's really true. So I'm flying out tomorrow, going to Bangkok. It's come, and then you're gonna meet me in Houston. Yeah, I'll meet you in Houston. I have to see. We have to wait and see, like, what her treatment plan is gonna be. You know, I have a two-month-old baby, and so a lot of hormones. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Going. She's pumping at the hospital all day. Yeah, like, that, that was, was I can't frustrating. But you got to You got to I couldn't let my milk dry up. So I just have to see if I can... And her husband, Byron, he would cook for us. Like, every day, he took took care of Leon. So Leon stayed here most most days with his cousin Hendrix, and Byron was such an amazing I know. I don't servant. know what... For us. A servant. servant. He is a... Byron has Not a servant's a, heart. He is such a good man, and he really... He cooked us... Because every... Game. Like, every night back from the hospital, George would come here, and we had to debrief, and, like decompress from what we went through and yeah. what our I mean more importantly what our mom was going through and what we were going to try to do and fix how we're going to fix things and, it was... and just go forward in the next like 24 hours and there's a lot more to the story that we can't talk about here but yeah. you know we're sharing what we can share and we're standing in faith that she will be heal healed and we really appreciate all of your the prayers that we've gotten we posted that on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. You can follow, follow Chloe Simone says on her Instagram play yeah, page. And make sure you. you subscribe to this channel, Chloe Simone says, and yeah, we're going to be, Oh, another thing that we're doing. Um, we've put together a fundraiser where we're selling Gigi sweatshirts, you know, not, we have, we do have good insurance, but it's just not going to cover everything. And if you want to su help support our mom and buy a Gigi sweatshirt, we would really appreciate it. I'll put the link to that in the description box. And also you just go to our website, shopgraceenjoy.com, and you can yeah get some clothes from us and support my mom that way as well if you don't want a sweatshirt. Yeah, that any because anything helps right now. Um, but I don't know. I say thank you all so much for listening. Uh, thank you all so much for listening to this story. I hope it's uplifting to anyone. And keep us in your prayers. Keep my please, mom in your please prayers. Please pray for our, my, our mom and all of our family because it's this is a really difficult time. 
God bless you all. I'll see you in the next one.